and viewers, we have Kofi Asante here, Sefa, and, and he has been doing a lot for Ghana Polo, but I'm not going to be his spokesman. He's here himself, and he will do that. Good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. Um, tell us your name and um, what's your ambition and aspiration for water polo in Ghana. Yeah, of course. My name is Prince Kofi Asante Sefa Buachi. Uh, the dream is to have a national team for water polo for Ghana on both boys and girls, men's and women's side, that can go on to represent on the national stage, of course, eventually in the Olympic Games. Um, I know it's not been easy. Tell us how you started. What's the idea before you came down where you decided to have this back home here in Ghana? So the idea really was birthed with my experiences as a player in high school and university and taking some trips abroad to train and I was always feeling out of place, if you could imagine. So I said, man, I could maybe have this crazy idea to go and bring a team, create a team in my own father's land in West Africa, Ghana. And that dream was supported by the facts that for anyone to see an all black team in the pool, representing at the highest level, it will motivate them to want to also join and even just be a great symbol of pride for many people. So I said, I don't know when, it might not be today, it won't be tomorrow, but it will happen soon. And since, I think 2018, to be, exact, to be exact, was when I really started to make small steps to build this thing. And 2021 is when we first established it, and now here we are today in 2024. I think seeing a pretty beautiful outcome. Um, can you walk us through some of the challenges you've encountered? A lot of challenges. I mean, first and foremost, just making sure we can gather the support that we need the financial support because pool culture is very expensive, renting the pool space is expensive and then it's about the safety of the kids, making sure they can come to the pool safely, getting their TNT, getting their food, you know, in and out from their home to the poolside. It's, just a, it's a lot of expenses, you know, and then on top of that, just trying to make sure the people who do come to help me, the volunteers, I'm able to sort them out as well so they can also believe that this is something worthwhile. And it's very challenging, no matter how much somebody will believe in me, the fact that you have to continue raising funds and asking for people to really support you with capital. It's a difficult thing. And I think it's been beautiful that we've had so many people from the community just support with what they have. So that it allows the corporations not to have so much of a dependence from us. So we can ask the people who believe in us in our cities to support. And then eventually we will have corporate Ghana, corporate US saying, I've seen the work, we want to help in and take uh, care of all your challenges, you know? Talking about the case, are we looking at an age range? So, between, um, which age is it? 12, 10? We really have all ages. There's no age limits. This group that we have right now, it's uh, predominantly from 10 to maybe 25. I think our youngest is probably three years old that will just splash around. Yeah. Wow. And the oldest will maybe be around 25, 26. And, um, you know, they all, I think the fact that I make this program equal opportunity because I, I do play on the fact that many people are afraid of the water. Not everybody wants to swim. So I say, okay, just come, come to the deep side. And those that are brave enough to take on that offer are the ones I know I want in the program. And then they will see, the ones who cannot swim will see the ones who can, and they will want to join, and then so on, and that is how we begin this cycle. How many groups or how many clubs do you have currently? Seven. We have seven different groups. Uh, our senior group, is the Awutu Winston Senior High School in Central Region. That was where it was all started, at a pool that was donated by the Princess Charlene of Monaco Foundation. And I went there working with their boys and girls team. That team grew. We were able to split that into a junior, senior, and a girls team. Then we came down to the Accra Art Center with the fishermen families, getting that community involved because they are pretty well associated with water. Yeah. And just showing them the basics and really just saying, hey, do you want to come to the pool? Come with us, we'll take care of your travel and your food. Then moving to regions uh, outside of Accra, you have the Asante region, Kumasi, that's how we worked with KNUST, Lake Bosom Tree. Even in the Volta region, we've gone there. We've gone to Gomwa Fete, we've gone to Cape Coast and getting those, just every water community involved. But the most consistent have been these seven teams from Accra, from Awutu, from Central region, and even the local ones here in Greater Accra. So, the teams are big enough, we split them into an A and a B team, boys and a girls team, and that's what we see today, seven different teams coming here to play. Um, 
I know you've traveled with some of your crew. Correct. Um, outside the country. Correct. Um, can you walk us through the experience you encounter? I know there was one from Italy that failed. Yeah, it was a, it was a big lesson from Italy. We uh, got a taste of really how well we need to prepare ourselves and how difficult this challenge is going to be because we've done everything we thought we needed to do as far as getting the awareness high, getting the proper documentation, getting the invitations, getting the morale, getting the support, and to still fall short after producing all these documents we thought that we had, it shows that, wow, this is a really serious issue we're facing to get out of the country and to take on an opportunity. So yes, it was a very big disappointment from the, we got the invitation, I think even a year ago today, and then from working with the boys, going into the villages, getting their information because the families have no idea of a birth certificate. They don't realize why do you need to get a passport. And that process of getting to understand why it's important to have that was a challenge in itself. And then once we get the passports, then we get the birth certificates, get the visa appointments, have the visa um, or the embassy appointments to receive the visas, then we get denied everybody with no... It was a big disappointment. It was very, very big. So. I have to look at it the way you look at it with sports. You win some games, you lose some games. You know, you can speak on a lot of the issues there. And the fact that it's happened to other groups, especially from Africa, I think it's something that speaks to the African story. Because people were shocked around the world. Oh, how can this team not go to Italy? But people from our country and our culture know it's nothing new. That our challenges are higher than those other people. So it was difficult. but. I was able to go to Halawaba and represent in Venice, Italy and just gain the support, tell the stories, tell people what happened and gain the wisdom saying, hey, look, we really do have a team despite what people might doubt. We really do have a program, really are invited. How can we, how can we gain access to the same opportunities you are enjoying so effortlessly? And through that, we were able to receive an additional invitation to go to Brazil in December of last year. And we had the passports ready, we had the story ready, we had more now diplomatic support that made that process a lot easier. Sadly, the financial issues were the ones that clipped our wings. We didn't have enough capital to raise on top of what we already paid for airline tickets. So we could only afford to take two, one coach and one athlete. And even though we took two players and only one athlete could go, the one athlete that went was able to score a goal. And represent not just for Ghana but for Africa, for the you know, for the whole, uh, for melanin, melanated people. And I thought that's just important. Even though we weren't able to get the whole team, just getting one to go and come back, he can now tell the story. He can now tell people that yeah, we got denied, but then we tried again and we were successful. You know, so these stories are important, and it's even more important that we show our perseverance through the disappointments on the path to success, because. The disappointments are only so great because our success is only so high in the future. Because we've had the disappointments with the embassy. We've had financial issues. We've had lack of support. We've had people that have not been able to come and provide what they say they can and not, come, not following through. We've even sadly faced two deaths from our players this year, solely off of systemic issues. And still, I tell them, look, the way that we can win this thing is we have to just keep playing. Because if we quit, the whole thing will fall. Even though these challenges, they make it very easy to say, you know what, I can't, this is too much. From the finances, the up and down for this, it's too much. But, you know, my perseverance, I think, is the, is the, is the lesson that this is something worth uh, pursuing. Um, on the face of federation, um, are you willing to join any federation or any governing body? Or you want to stay autonomous and run? everything by yourself. So it's interesting there is actually a federation for swimming in Ghana that oversees all aquatics in the country. So we are we have a club that is uh, registered through them that will give us the international recognition. The tricky thing is many other countries around the world that are dominated by the sport of water polo have their own independent water polo federation but they are in a direct affiliation with their swimming boards, the swimming federations. So that gives a little bit more freedom I think we'll reach that point eventually, but as for right now, our wisest choice will be to work with the Aquatic Federation as it is there, lift all the aquatic bodies in the country. And sure, it'll be fine to get the independence to have a water polo federation. I'm sure that will come eventually, but as for right now, we have to play along uh, the rules. We have to follow the bureaucratic system, you know. I mean, I will still 
take my independent approach. I will still push and do things my way. And if I'm able to give the support, then I will make the foundation set. But for someone to come and lift it up, that will have to come from a diplomatic government federation. Um, finally, what are your final words um, for Ghanaians? Yeah. And um, um, what would you encourage them to do towards supporting water polo? Hey, I'm just going to tell you to come. Come to the pool. Come to the games. Come to the swimming league. Come to the events. It's not like you haven't seen this thing happening. You know this Rasta man is coming here. You know it's a water polo match. This Rasta man's coming here. He's going to do some music to go up and down. Hey, just come. Just come to this thing because I'm just one person doing all these things. We've been able to receive support from all over the world to make this thing happen. Now we just need the Ghanaians to come, you know? Don't worry, I won't hold my breath. I already do that too much on the pool side. But you need to come and support this thing. Everybody sitting up there, the ones who come to the conferences, the people who say they want to do something. Oh, can you imagine this team, this program coming from nothing to be in the Olympic Games one day? So come, support, see some magic and join the team. It's Black Star Polo for the world, Ghana Water Polo. We are bringing the gold back home. Finish. Thank you very much. Yo. My name is Fred, reporting for FM Sports. Boom, Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Water Polo here at the University of Ghana, Legon. And uh, you just listened to the interview of the president or the chairman or the CEO. Uh, Mr. Asante Sefa, all the way from United States of America. And here we have a player here. We want to have 